You know guys, I think that group finders honestly get a bit of a bad rap. They're not all that... What is... Any D&D 5e game through Messenger I will join. I am never busy. Also, I require being able to use my homebrew items. Okay, yeah, they can be crappy sometimes. As any other good horror story goes, this one starts at LFG. Few months ago, I've stumbled upon a small advertisement in our local LFG about a heavy roleplay game and decided that if I have enough spare time, I'll give it a go. I've been invited to a Discord server with only one other dude. Server was too big for a regular game and soon I figured out that a few games were running here by a few DMs. The DM in this story invited us to voice chat and started explaining his homebrew world, and then announced that his game will be The Curse of Strahd. It wasn't mentioned in the advertisement, and the DM started explaining that the game will be in fact homebrew and in his homebrew world. He just needed a name for the big vampire villain and didn't want to use Dracula. The other guy left immediately as he didn't sign up for a module. And I should have followed him, but I really wanted to play some of my characters in a roleplay heavy group, so I stayed. Stupid me. The DM then went on a rant about how the dude was wrong and his character idea was stupid anyway. He wanted to play a forge cleric. What kind of concept is that? Am I right? Well, this was the first big red flag, and at this point I realized that this will be some crap kind of game, and even if I won't be able to have a good time, I will be able to have a good laugh. So I kind of knew where we were going, but I couldn't know how bad it would be. Then the DM asked me for my concepts. I offered him four or five different characters, and he said they all didn't fit in his world. I exclusively play small races, but he doesn't have any in his world. No kobolds, no goblins, no gnomes, no halflings. Besides, only people who min-max play halflings. There is literally no other reason? Okay, I have three beloved concepts at the moment, and they are not small, but still don't have feet in this world. No dragonborn allowed, no monks allowed, no artifices allowed. He says my blood hunter is okay, but I won't let you play it, it's underpowered. And who even plays Phalox? At some point, he sends me some character reference and asks, what if it would be a Nordic tiefling ranger? Okay, so I finally get my character, Tyra. DM suggests me a few character traits and reasons why she's not in the north right now and we establish her connections. DM tells me she should have some kind of blinking, and it's important to the plot? I agree and pick the Horizon Walker subclass. So we start our session one, and of course there was no session zero. The cast was the DM, he is just that. Tyra is me. Paladin is the owner of the server and the DM of another game where our DM and Bladelock are playing. Bladelock, a very special elven woman and sister of Paladin, Phalok, a young and curious girl, Artificer, some old friend of the DM. Huh. He told me that he doesn't want any Artificers, but here is one anyway. Maybe she just had better character concept. From the start, my Tyra is assigned as a bodyguard to Artificer. I'm okay-ish with that. We meet as a party somewhere three hours of game time in, and it's going pretty well actually. Players are great, DM is a good storyteller, and he puts a lot of effort into visuals and music. Fun so far. I've made Tyra a little brutish, but putting a lot of nature-related metaphors. Our interactions with Artificer are fun as well. We all are going to Artificer's old mansion, and when we find it, I realize it's a death house. I'm not running the module, he said. So yeah, Artificer is the last of her family. Others were slain by Strahd, and this is her mansion. We enter and explore all floors, but there is zero encounters. There is some crap in the basement that we kill. DM tells us we can't stop the session until we finish. It's almost seven hours of play. At the end, he says, You did a bad job. Our party is unbalanced. We only have one frontliner who gets obliterated in two rounds. Somehow, my character did okay, or so he says. 
only one of us gets downed in combat, but he wants everything to be very realistic. So if you don't patch yourself up immediately after being hit, you die. Role playing was fun though, so I'm still on board. We all stay to talk after session and DM says, I want to play D&D with friends, so we all must become friends. Every evening we sit and chat. Come sit with us. I have some neurotic problems with coming to places I wasn't personally invited, so I tell him that and tell him to tell me if they're having a thing so that I can come. Anyway, after that, we all leave. I text DM after the game asking if I can change my subclass so it will fit the melee playstyle more, and he is okay with that, but he mentions that I will still need blinking for plot reasons and he will make me a feat that I must take. Okay, I guess. Session 2 comes, we all sit in the death house. Drinking teas and making plans on how to renovate this place to live here. DM says that we can't live here, we need to go to Barovia. So, we go. We go there, meet Ismark, he tells us about the place and about Irina. We totally are not playing a module here. He changed things a bit, to be honest. Irina and Ismark are lovers now. We, totally not according to the module, escort Irina to Valaki. I have a great time interacting in character, but Paladin is mostly silent. Faelok meets her patron, and it's a League of Legends character. The DM is constantly praising League of Legends for characters being written well every minute of his life. We end the session, and DM says to Faelok player in a disappointed tone, I expected your character to act otherwise. Weird to hear such things, oh well. DM starts ranting that nobody came to voice chat to be friends, and we all leave. The Artificer private messages me to discuss our character's relationship and we talk a bit about our characters. She says, oh, you have a Nordic Ranger with Blink? I played that character in DM's previous game, she has a nice story. Wait, what the hell? She says that she played with this DM before and she played Nordic Rogues with some Blink and it was a lot of fun. I find it disturbing that the DM just decided to give me someone else's character and story, despite me being proud of backstories I made myself, but I decided not to call them out. Session 3, we fight some random centaurs on the way to Valaki. DM says that we are doing badly again. None of us were down, so I don't really know what he's talking about. And he made the last centaur run away. We reach Velaki, and it is certainly not from a module. Isaac gives us a bad time, and DM is pushing us to fight him. Bladelock, who at this point is our party face, she does most of the interactions with the NPCs. All of them pressure her not to kill Isaac, but somehow remove him instead. We get there and start fighting guards in a small hall, but we all roll badly and can't kill guards in three rounds. So some rebels arrive and we go on a small staircase to floors below. Isaac is standing in front of us here. Everything is going to crap. So I ask DM if I can transfer my hunter's mark to Isaac. He says, no, I was running a whole minute on a 40 foot staircase. I don't object. I don't like arguing with the DM in the middle of the game. So we start fighting again, me and the paladin frontlining. I cast Zephyr Strike to leave Isaac's melee range as I don't have much HP left, and I decide to throw axes from afar. Then I ask DM if I can pick up one of my axes near Isaac as item interaction. He says, sure, I come in melee range and leaves. He says, he's gonna make an opportunity attack. I have Zephyr Strike still on, I don't provoke opportunity. He has this special ability, so you do provoke opportunity. Can I read the ability? No, I didn't write it down. Okay, so he hits me and I'm unconscious. Bladelock, who was told like 40 times by some NPC that we need Isaac alive, asks if she can throw a knife to his knee to make her range attack not lethal. He doesn't allow it, so she has to come closer and hits him in melee. She misses, as she has a really crappy bonus to melee. Isaac crits on her brother, leaving him one-eyed. Of course we had injuries in our roleplay heavy game. We eventually win, but everyone is frustrated. Tyra insists on cutting Isaac's arm off for necessary medical procedure. DM says okay, but Artificer and Bladelock players start arguing that it's not realistic. And if he can die to dagger in the knees, then he can certainly die to having an arm cut off. 
so the DM rage quits. That would have been a good ending to the story, but he comes back to apologize in half an hour later. He gathers us all and announces that two characters will die next session. I say, okay, me and Paladin, obviously, we are in melee. The DM says, no, it won't be Tyra. We all sit in silence, like, is it okay for a DM to be planning a character death, let alone two character deaths, let alone a roleplay heavy game, in session 4? I don't think so. Artificer calls DM in a private voice call to ask him not to kill her character because she likes her and she is going through some stuff in real life and doesn't want any more stress. And she figures out that he does plan to kill the Artificer and the Blade Lock. We don't talk about it much, and session 4 is coming. There are some things going on the server, which spice things up a bit. So there is three games currently, one run by Paladin, one run by the DM, and Bladelock is gathering new players to start her own. She invited a few last week, one of them is a miner who is enthusiastic and drew a little cute druid. The DM plays in all three games. So, day of the game comes, and I get messaged by the DM half an hour before it starts, to come to voice chat. Bladelock left the server, he says. She didn't give any reasoning to anyone, she just left their gaming group in a messenger and blocked the DM. She also left all her newfound players on the server. We sit for a bit till Artificer and Warlock enter the voice chat, and we start discussing what could have happened? Paladin was supposed to be absent that session. I get angry at first because, honestly, I don't like it when people ghost. But then one of her players, the kid, says that in a text, she explained that Bladelock left the server because it was toxic and they couldn't stand it anymore. We confront the DM, as last evening, they were playing League of Legends together in voice and he is the only one who could have known anything. He makes a guess. She left because you didn't want to be friends and never sit in voice with us. We shrug as that's kind of hard to believe, but he claims that it's a working theory. We discuss a few more possible reasons as another new player, we'll just call him Rogue, enters the voice and blames the DM for bullying Bladelock into leaving. Okay, so when Bladelock invited new players to her game, the DM felt obliged to call them in voice and explain to them how we play here. Rogue wanted to play a rogue, so DM called him to make sure he won't steal from the party and understands that playing Halfling is dumb. He made the kid cry by criticizing her character so much, and every time he got in voice with Bladelock, he pressured her to play her character as he sees it. After all, he assigned her that character. We're all sitting and listening to Rogue's case, silent. The DM says that everything Rogue said is full of crap, and says sarcastically, Maybe I assigned characters to anyone else? Yeah, you assigned a character to me, I said. And me, says Phalok. And me too, actually, says Artificer. I sit there silently. Both Artificer and Phalok entered this game after me. He said no to two classes I wanted to play as and gave them to those two players instead. The DM is trying to stabilize the situation. He does this by kicking Rogue from the voice chat to start persuading us that he's right. That we picked our characters ourselves, but all three of us are standing our ground at this point, trying to talk to the DM and explain to him that his actions led to Bladelock leaving this server and not wanting to do anything with TTRPGs anymore. He says, yes, that might be true, but she also might leave because you didn't sit in voice like friends. Then the paladin showed up. He says that he is banning the DM from his server and reads us a message from Bladelock, which sounds like she was abused by the DM. A lot. We all leave, but the story doesn't end. Me, Artificer, and Phalok have another common server at which we gather to discuss what happened, and Artificer tells us about their previous game which also broke up because of the DM's crap. He apparently lied to them about his age, as two years ago he was 20, and a few days prior to our last session, he told us he had his 20th birthday. He once even lied about his father dying to stop the session. At the time, she didn't know he was lying, yet she figured it out later, and hoped that he got better. When we were generating Tyra, he told me about his roleplay group and showed me a few commissions of his characters. 
I googled them and obviously it wasn't his character or his commissions. I don't know what else he lied about, but when he created another server and invited us, only Artificer joined to support her friend, just to be later blamed for the second group breaking up, as per the DM. I contacted Paladin and guess what, he got his character assigned as well. He wanted to play Ranger, but DM doesn't allow him and forces me to play Ranger instead. All the time, he was silent in the game because he just didn't want to play his character. Oh, right, just in case you haven't figured it out, but all of our characters were League of Legends characters, my blinking Nordic crap. Feylock was Nico all along, too. I struggle to name the others as I don't play League of Legends. I just hope Bladelock will forgive us all and consider trying TTRPGs sometime again. TLDR, DM forces everyone in the game to play characters someone else wanted to play, bullies everyone when his expectations weren't met till the group explodes. We all play totally original homebrew, which totally wasn't Curse of Strahd. Man, that was not only long, but an incredibly bumpy ride. There is so much crap in this story. This DM pulls a lot. But I think the big message that we haven't covered before is lying to the players during session zero. Guys, that is one of the worst things you can do as a DM. Setting expectations is really important. Not setting expectations is bad. Lying and setting false expectations is the worst. Don't say your campaign is homebrew if it's a module. Just tell them it's a module, it's not a big deal. Don't force players to play pregens if they don't need to play pregens. That's another big one. A big part of D&D for me is character creation. Character creation is awesome. I love sitting in during character creation. Helping my players make characters is really fun. Helping to build out their vision for their character. Sometimes even homebrewing mechanics just so that they could have the vision for their character come true in the game. That's a big part of it for me. I love doing that. So forcing players to play pregens when they really don't have to, especially if you're just doing it so you can have a League of Legends fan fiction in Curse of Strahd, that's not okay. It's also just weird. Online D&D can be filled with toxic behavior. Real life D&D can too, but when you're online, those boundaries kind of fall away and that results in people being more comfortable with being assholes. And this story illustrates that really well. Shut down toxic behavior if you see it, whether it's online or in real life. That can kill a group really fast. It can kill any social dynamic really fast. It's the worst. Don't let it happen. It's actually funny. Side note is that I actually have my own personal RPG horror story that involves League of Legends, but maybe that's a tale for another day. Until then, if you guys enjoyed this episode of RPG Horror Stories and you want to see more, then please do leave a like. If you want to see more of my content, then please do hit subscribe. And finally, if you want to leave your own stories and thoughts, then go down to the comments down below. In essence, like, comment, subscribe. I will see you all next time. Farewell.